this bill. Thank you. Uh, the Honourable <coughs> Ruth Dyson. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm delighted to be the final speaker in the first reading of the Excellent Compensation Amendment Bill. Uh, and I want to first of all commend the Honourable Ian Lees Galloway for his prompt leadership in picking up in part what was um, started by the previous minister under the previous government, but also some new initiatives in this bill. Uh, it, it's great to see his first bill in this portfolio come before the House. I do want to also acknowledge the Honourable Michael Woodhouse, who started some of the work um, for this legislation, and um, I'm sure he'll be pleased to see it progressing as well. A number of speakers during the debate have talked about the the world-leading status of ACC, and I want to totally agree with that. I had um, many conversations with the Right Honourable Sir Owen Woodhouse, who was one of the instigators of the scheme um, before, his, before his death, which was a great loss, not just to um, ACC, but in a whole range of other contributions that uh, Owen made to our communities. So I just want to acknowledge his contribution uh, as the is the vision behind the ACC scheme. Not only is it a comprehensive injury prevention, rehabilitation and compensation scheme, um, but it, it also gives every New Zealander the opportunity to receive fair compensation and rehabilitation without having to resort to legal action. Uh, some people describe it as we gave up the right to sue, but actually the, only about 1% of injuries ever resulted, pre-1974, ever resulted in successful legal action against the, against the person or incident that injured the person. So when, when we say we gave up the right to sue, not many people had it because it cost a lot of money and the level of proof was quite high. So there were very few successful suing actions in New Zealand prior to this. So, so we gained a huge amount and lost very little. Uh, when um, the scheme was introduced, it, it was indeed um, world leading and a lot of countries have since come to New Zealand and studied it, but very few other jurisdictions have had the courage to say, we should try and prevent injury, we should provide compensation and rehabilitation for any injured people, and we shouldn't resort, have to resort to the courts in order to do that. There are some parts of the world that have this, but none that offer it to every single citizen. They are limited to workers' compensation schemes rather than our compre comprehensive scheme that we have now. In fact, workers' compensation schemes are probably much easier to administer because they wouldn't come up against the challenges that this bill, in part, seeks to address. For example, the, uh, the situation where the dependents, the families of workers who are employed overseas, who are covered by the scheme, they might be um, you know, diplomats or public servants of some sort, they receive cover, but their families haven't received cover if you look at the technicality of the law. This bill fixes that. Uh, Jan Logie from the Green Party and her contribution mentioned that this provision was made retrospective in this bill and how the Green Party usually doesn't do retrosp retrospectivity but agreed to in this situation. And that is because nobody seems to be able to determine how this change in previous policy came to be, what was the policy thinking behind it, and it seems as though it was never implemented by ACC anyway. They didn't think the law had been changed. It appears it had been. Uh, I was on that select committee in 1998, and I am going to research my notes of that time. And I may speak to the then chair of the committee, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee, who I know paid close attention to every detail in that legislation. He often mentioned that during the committee meetings, so I'm sure it's correct. Another committee member at the time was uh, Derek Quigley, who at that stage represented the ACT Party, and the House might be interested to know that Derek Quigley worked with uh, New Zealand First and the Alliance, or New Labour, whichever it was at the time, and Labour, to get over 400 amendments to the, to the very bill uh, that changed the dependent provisions. So I'm sure I'll have some record of that, but. The, if uh, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee or the Honourable Derek Quigley or the Honourable Lila Hare, who was on that committee as well, uh, recall it, it would be very useful for the 
select committee who's going to consider this bill <coughs> to have that information. So we have the extension of ACC cover to the spouses and um, dependents, the removal of the election requirement for spouses or dependents um, who, who receive superannuation. That was a human rights tribunal uh, recommendation that we change that provision because it's discriminatory on the basis of age. The people who receive weekly compensation will now be able to elect uh, it will be able to continue to receive weekly compensation for up to two years after they receive New Zealand superannuation entitlement. That this is a good step forward, and I commend the minister for it. I don't think we have yet got a clear determination of how long weekly compensation could be paid for if the person has a permanent impairment. And I would recommend to the select committee that they consider. Um, permanent impairment payments as an alternative to what is a very difficult and contentious issue. That, you know, I'm sure that will come up in submissions. Um, also, there's the automatically um, updating of the maximum and minimum, minimum liable earnings. That's another area that has never been um, updated properly. I, I know of many examples where young quite poorly paid people, you could even be on an apprenticeship or training wage, have severe and permanent injuries and are then consigned to a lifetime of being on a low income because 80 per cent of not very much is very difficult to live on and it's not increased enough, in my view, to keep pace with the increases in the cost of living. The, um, the bill also abolishes the uh, Accident Compensation Appeal Authority. That authority has been dealing with the uh, claimants' appeals for review from 1972 and 1982 legislation. Uh, it, it's probably not in use very much. It's probably quite expensive to administer, and I'm sure that once again the Minister has made the right decision to move those cases from the authority to the court. This is a, this is a bill that sounds like it's got support from across the House, and I think that's good. That's the way the scheme was introduced. It has said some pretty challenging times between 1974 and now. I remember the 1998 legislation that, that I discussed earlier actually privatised the uh, workers' compensation account. We had private insurers, clearly driven by profit and policy uh, rigour, uh, in charge of workers' compensation. That was a very sad time. Uh, for New Zealand, and I was delighted that in 1999 the um, government changed, and uh, Mary McCulley was no longer the minister, and the incoming government sought to restore um, ACC to being a state organisation rather than having any private interest. Um, this, this is, um, as the minister indicated in his speech, this is a small bill in comparison to quite fundamental and progressive changes that we will see coming either later this year or early next year. I am sure that despite this being uh, only covering quite a number of small issues, that the Select Committee will be pleased by the amount of interest that I am confident will, will arise out of the points that have been made, because they are all better meant to the current legislation. They all improve the Act. They make it fairer. They make it more transparent and they resolve the frustrations that a number of people have had. So I, I might sub into this committee, uh, Madam Speaker, because I'm very interested in ACC and the scheme. It, it is a delight when people, um, when, you know, people take an interest and come and give you submissions. Oh, thank you very much, Mr Mark. I'd like you to put that on public record more often, please. <laughs> um, just one other point that I want to make, because I'd feel that I would be shortchanging Parliamentary Council if I didn't mention that in um, the 1998 legislation I actually presented certificates to the people who were working from nine in the morning till midnight, five days a week, on that legislation, uh, who wrote private domestic workers more often than any other term. It was a new term to all of us, and it was one that was introduced or, or altered as part of that legislation. So I know that um, they'll be listening to this debate because they listen to pretty well everything in our parliament, and I commend the work that they did then. I'm pleased we're not doing this under urgency from 9am till midnight, as the privatisation was by the then national government. That was a pretty outrageous breach 
of natural process. This will go through a much better process, and I look forward to hearing the submissions and hearing the second reading on its conclusion. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Accident Compensation Amendment Bill, first reading. The question is that the Accident Compensation Amendment Bill be considered by the Education and Workforce Committee. Those of that opinion will say aye. Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Call on Government Order of the Day, number two. Local Electoral Matters Bill.